Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this coffee table. I am absolutely obsessed with it. It's such a unique design. I kind of took this trend that has been going around and made it into my own thing. And we made a DIY on a budget and I just want to show you guys how I did it because it came out really good. Let's get right into it and talk about the supplies that you will need for this project. First, you will need three wood rounds. I got mine from Lowe's and I got the 36 inch. Obviously, that is customizable based on what you would like. Then, of course, you will need some pull wrap. We got two of them. This stuff is really perfect because it gives that fluted look that a lot of furniture has, but it has a backing to it, so that will allow us to make it that rounded shape. You will need five to six pieces of one by two pine board. That is what will be cut down into very small pieces to use around the edge so you have something to attach the pull wrap to. We used about 120 squares total, so that is about 240 inches of the pine board. Then you will want eight different support beams that are around eight inches tall. I got mine off of Amazon. Probably could have been some better ways to do that now after the fact, but we'll still show you how we did it anyways. These are just necessary for support. Some other supplies that you will need is some sort of construction adhesive. We use liquid nails just to kind of aid in the strength of the whole thing. You will also want some finished nails. It's a lot easier to use a nail gun for this. It goes a lot quicker, a lot easier. But if you don't have a nail gun, just get some finished nails to be able to nail all of the pull wrap into the structure. You will need something to cut the wood with. Typically I say when you have wood projects, you can ask for them to cut it at the store. However, this project has a lot of cuts, especially for the little wood pieces. So you will need to kind of do that yourself. We used a table saw for ours. If you don't have any sort of electric saw, you can always rent a miter saw. You can basically rent anything these days at the hardware store. So if you don't have it, you can always get it for a day. And then of course it is a wood project. So you'll want things to finish off your wood. And this is obviously very customizable. We like to use a pre-stain so the stain goes on smoothly. And then we use a stain of our choice, which is right now special walnut, one of my favorites. You will need obviously supplies to stain with and then you want a sealant this is the one that we used and that is it so let's get into how we built it let me start off by saying this was very difficult for us it took us a long time it's a lot more in-depth than other DIYs that we have done previously however I think it will be a lot easier for you guys than it was for us because we kind of had to work out the kinks and find the things that went wrong in order to know how to do it better next time so yeah. The first thing you'll want to do is take your three wood rounds and kind of like pick your favorite one to be the top and then pick your favorite sides of the other ones to be the parts that show. You don't have to do this step, but if you're someone like me, you'll want to do it. Based on those decisions, we marked where we wanted to put our structural supports for this. This is how you're going to want to line up your structural supports. Basically, there are four of them in between each layer three across the center and then one on the side for extra support there. You'll want to attach your supports to those areas right now on two of the wooden rounds. You can go ahead and attach those supports right away to those two wooden rounds that they will be attached to first. You'll want to choose the side that you don't like quite as much because this will be inside of the structure. I recommend attaching your supports to the bottom of your top piece of wood and to the top of your bottom piece of wood. So your middle piece of wood is kind of just like existing on its own for the time being. Then you'll want to cut down all of the small little support wood pieces so you have them ready to go to attach to your structure. The depth of the pull wrap is 1 8 inch if you get the same one that we used. And so what we did is we measured 1 8 inch in on all of the wood rounds and that way we could attach the pull wrap to all of the supports that were 1 8 inch in and then it would be perfectly flush with the outside of the wood. You don't want to go all the way around the circle with these measurements, you want to do all the way around your supports. So as you can see in the design, it is like a half circle on each level, so that is where you'll be doing your measurements and marks for where the pull wrap will go. Then once you have that all measured out, you want to take your little pieces of wood and glue them into place all around the edge of your measurements that you made. Now you want these to be very close together. So we had an issue in the start that we didn't put them close together enough. And so when we ended up cutting our pull wrap, which is about one foot in width all the way around. So you have to put a bunch of pieces. It didn't end up working very well because there were all of these gaps where the pull wrap would meet and there would not be a support for them to attach to. So we ended up having to add a lot more supports and it got really messy and time consuming. So definitely just make these very close in succession like 
as close as you can while still making it a round structure. Once you have them all glued in place, you'll want to take your nail gun or any other nails if you don't have a nail gun and nail them all in place as well because you really need these to be extremely sturdy so that when you put the pull wrap around, that is also sturdy because you don't want for your final project for someone to be able to kick the coffee table and have everything fall apart. So you definitely want to make sure that this step is very stable. So here is where another mishap happened for us. We got really excited about installing the pull wrap. So we went ahead and did that right away before we put the different layers of the table together. Um, don't recommend it. It made it very difficult for us to be able to get inside to screw all of the different supports together. So don't do that. The next step that you should do is then put everything that you've worked on so far together. So that is taking all three of the layers and attaching them to each other. And if you get the same table legs that we did, this is going to be a little bit difficult. I definitely recommend ordering table legs that have connections on the top and the bottom. Ours did not have that, so we had to make our own connection to the top, which I don't recommend again, but I will tell you how we did it. Basically, we just took the cap of our wood legs and we attached that to a piece of wood with glue and also a screw. And then we added this metal support to the piece of wood using some liquid nails, and that allows us to screw up into the wood round. Obviously not the most amazing way to do things, but it did work, it is sturdy, so if you're not able to find table legs that have the support on the top and bottom, you can do it this way. Very time consuming though. So basically then you're just putting the middle layer onto the bottom layer, screwing up with those metal supports that we got, and then you're just adding the top piece on and you wanna make sure when you do this that your supports for the top layer are on the opposite side of the bottom layer so that your structure looks how it's supposed to in the end. And then once all of that is done, it should be very secure, very sturdy. It just isn't the prettiest yet because you haven't put on the pull wrap. Obviously we are already have some pull wrap on for this but again I don't recommend that. So the pull wrap comes very tall but not very wide so you're going to want to cut a lot of pieces of the pull wrap somewhere around eight inches whatever works best for you. You can measure between your different layers to make sure that it is extremely accurate and then you want to use your saw to cut them all to that height. And then once they are cut, you just wanna wrap them around all of those supports that you worked so hard on, and then use your nail gun to nail it right into place. We also use some glue here between the backing and the wood supports, just to make sure that it is really stuck in place. That's kind of optional, but I definitely recommend it. And then once everything is dry, you are ready to go for your finishing layer. So that means sanding it down to make sure it's ready for stain. You wanna use a pre-stain on it to make sure that no knots or anything look really weird with the stain. And then you add your stain of choice. We used special walnut because you guys know how much I love special walnut. And then once that has an ample amount of time to dry, you can go in with a few coats of your favorite finisher. We used a spray version just to make it go really fast because this project took us a very long time because we had to figure out everything that went wrong. So that is how we did it before we get into the final results. Let's talk about some things that we should have probably done differently differently to make it go a lot faster and not give us so many headaches. First for the pull wrap, instead of using a table saw, we should have used a chop saw because it led to some inaccuracies and we had to recut our pull wrap a whole lot and it took a lot of time to get them all to the same measurement. So I definitely recommend doing that. My next recommendation is to not use the table legs that we used. Obviously we'll link it because that's how we did it. So if you want to follow this straight for as it is, you can do that. However, we definitely recommend making something maybe out of a wooden dowel or ordering something that has connections on the top and bottom so you don't have to go through all of that stress that we did. And then of course, the things that I already mentioned is making sure that the little pieces of wood are very close to each other and not attaching the pull wrap until the very end. Okay, so now that all of those headaches are out of the way, this is how the table turned out. I can't even explain to you guys how happy I am with it. Obviously it was a journey, but I'm literally so obsessed with it. It looks exactly like the renderings that I made. I really love this style of coffee table that has been kind of trending right now. I think it really matches my personal style very well. So I wanted to make something with that kind of look, but I wanted it to feel very me and be my own design. And I love this version so much better because it has those little shelves so we can keep our tray for our remotes on one of the levels. And then on the other level, I like to keep our magazines 
jeans and it's just like so functional but also so beautiful and matches the rest of our space and what I love the most about it is that it's so sturdy. I think our old coffee table was just so flimsy and so small and so this one is just so much better and a lot more table space too so we can do a lot more and lastly i know you guys always want to know the cost of these types of projects if you want to recreate them yourself so i will do that i don't know it off the top of my head but we will do it in editing so this is the price of all of these tables that i found online that you can buy from a retailer or an Etsy store is typically where you can buy this type of table. This is the price that I found basically everywhere. And this is the price of what we were able to do and it's a lot nicer, a lot more going on with the table. I honestly think the biggest cost for this DIY was 100% the wood rounds. I have no idea why they are so expensive. If you wanted to scale this project down and do a smaller size of wood rounds, that will definitely save your budget a little bit. Or if you try something else other than wood rounds, you could also thrift some furniture that has round tabletops and use those instead of using the raw wood rounds. There's so many different possibilities here, but that is what we came up with. But yeah, I hope you guys loved this DIY. If you try it out, please make sure to tag me. I love seeing when you guys try my DIYs especially this one because it's one of my favorites. But that is it for today's video, so I'll see you guys on next week for some more design stuff. Bye guys!